Happy Tuesday. It's Tech Talk Tuesday 161. I think that's right. That's a little over three years. Uh, I've got to see who checks in here uh, before we get on the subject that I'm going to tell you about today. There you go. We've got Chuck. Thank you, Chuck. Good job. All right, let's get some more coming up. Everybody sign up. Tech Talk Tuesday number 161. Hey, Justin, it's number 161. We're at 6 o'clock Eastern. Dead on the head right there. 5 o'clock in Tennessee, where I am. And Stephen. Hey, Stephen. And then I've got uh, Chris Bostick. Yep, the big TTT race weekend. Yeah, we got some cool thoughts on Indy. I'm going to share with you and tell you a little bit about it. Also, hey, Ricky. Uh, thank you guys for clicking in. Um, yes, it is. This is what we do every Tuesday at 6 o'clock Eastern p.m. Some of you are still at work in California. Some of you are going to bed in Europe. Some of you are tomorrow in Australia and down under. We have some great friends everywhere now. Tech Talk Tuesday has helped us reach globally and talk to people about hot rod engines, nor normally aspirated, uh, turbocharged, supercharged nitrous oxide but it's most always about a, a internal combustion engine i like to have gasoline or fuel and i like to light them off hey john hey chris hey jeff thank you for tuning in jeff one of my drag racing times uh timing system racetrack setup gurus uh he's my go-to guy hey jack hey robert but anyway um star racing now um thanksgiving will end up being about Ooh, uh, 43 years that we've been very fortunate to do this. Um, Tech Talk, like I said, this is our third year doing Tech Talk Tuesday every Tuesday in a row. Um, I'm doing good. People ask me, said, George, um, why are you giving away the farm? Why are you giving away all the secrets? Why are you telling all this stuff? Hey, Ian, hey, Dave. It's, it's not giving away. It's giving back. Um, I've been fortunate. I've been blessed my whole life. Um, to have Donald, hey Scott, to have the racing career that we've had and people think that um, we've had it great our whole life because Jackie and I have projected that basically um, and, and it also comes from our heart because we really do believe that we have been blessed by the good Lord to get advantages and have things go our way even when we were struggling, even when we were hungry and even when we couldn't rest and when we didn't have money and our checking account was overdrawn and our, ch our credit cards were stacked beyond, um, all of us have been through that roller coaster. We were really doing well and buying stuff and went to the bottom and was eating turkey dogs and buying one cheeseburger when we got a little bit of money. Jackie and I sold some spark plugs. No, we sold a spark plug for a dirt bike in 1980 at Star Racing in America's Georgia. We were on... Uh, our first little baby shop and a guy came in and gave us three dollars for the spark plug and uh, we went to hardy's we walked to hardy's it wasn't but three blocks and we got one cheeseburger one coke two straws and us and and we got a set of french fries and you know you're a drag racer when you call an order of fries you call them a set of fries but we were we thought we had it made i mean we would i could come to work when i wanted to I turned the music on loud. I'd stay late. I'd pop a beer if I wanted to, but we would work on racing engines. But I wanted to tell you real quick about the roots. And uh, I, I, if you follow me and you're on Facebook now and you may have seen me, I posted a picture that I put on my Facebook page. It showed a, a mobile home trailer and it showed a little uh, orange Pontiac Astra. And that was in 1980 when we bought our first business license. And there were 1,200 people moved to America's Georgia, Sumter County the same time we did because the cellulose plant on, on the uh, river was being built during that time. And 1,200 people moved there to go to work at Procter & Gamble right there. And uh, there was nowhere to stay. There were no houses. There were no apartments to rent. So we kept going further and further and further out. And we found a vacant mobile home on Lake Blackshear right behind the Anchored Flint restaurant. And uh, they wanted $100 a month for it, and it was fully furnished. And it, we, it had central heat, which I was very thankful for uh, because we got started in January when it was really cold there. And um, central heat was kind of cool. It was a heater in the center of the mobile home, and we had a piece of garage paneling that I brought from the shop. And we leaned it up in the hall and angled. The, we deflected the airflow from the heater to the bedroom 
so we were able to deflect the heat into the bedroom and um but that was central heat and the reason i said it was central heat is because the heater was in the center of the mobile home but it was a hundred dollars a month and i'm telling you that was that was a lot of money in 1980 but there was nowhere else to stay but we thought we had it made we had a 300 hundred dollar car that we owned um we had a hundred dollar a month mobile home and we had our first little shop in in town it was called star cycle in downtown america and and that little shop was a thousand dollars a month for the rent it was a tiny little building and it was full of motorcycles in about six months but that little place we lived was on the river it was down a little slough they call it and when it would rain the river would fill up before the dam would open down by albany and it would um the water would come up into our yard and it would come up to the steps over the steps up to the mobile home and we had it up on blocks and you know it's a mobile home when when uh when when you could hook a trailer to it and move it to another piece of property you know it's mobile but um i'm not making fun of anybody had one because i did and i was man i was in hog heaven it was a single wide and it was had some really cheap furniture but let me just tell you about the roots of it all was when it rained and we would drive home we would have to pull up and the wake would come in front of the car and when you open the car door water would come in the car and we jackie and i had put concrete blocks to the steps because when the water would come up you would be able to step on the concrete blocks and they were about three foot apart and you had to have really good aim but if it rained hard and the water covered the concrete blocks it was kind of muddy and and we would tr try to guess where they were so you would take a big step and maybe you would hit the concrete block on the way to the house or when you come out of the house you would try to get on the concrete blocks and come to the car um, but if you missed the block man you went down and you would get soaked even if you were coming home or even if you were going to work but um, when i would get to go to work man i was so happy because i worked on motorcycles for a living and i got to do it for 40 something years um, but i'm not complaining because i'm telling you me and jackie thought we had it made but i'm, I'm prefixing all this by saying right now we have a different kind of we have it made we're very fortunate that our uh, camshaft business is growing and doing well we have a great product and i am getting to learn every day about this awesome um, clientele that we have now and the people that want the best camshafts and they want the best cylinder head parts valve springs retainers locks and all the cool stuff we have we got some really nice parts that we spent 40 years learning what was great and what wasn't great so don't let me complain about living in the in the um, trailer park when we first started because look when you're 25 years old and you got that cool little girl jackie bryce at the time she was uh, she was jackie grucock at the time yeah that was her mom and daddy's baby and she was my girlfriend and i was happy and we got married in 1980 so she could move from florence south carolina with her teaching contract and come to georgia and teach elementary school at cherokee elementary in america's georgia so just wanted to let you know that was a little bit why i put that picture up and how great it humbled us to realize how good we have it now we got a great house we got a swimming pool i got some cool cars and motorcycles and I'm, we are the typical overnight success in the camshaft business that only took 40 years to be overnight. And um, we'll talk about those now after I got through boring you with my, my um, living in the hood story. And um, we were thankful. Oh, $300 car. So I worked till midnight or when I got tired because it wasn't fun at the mobile home. Uh, there was no TV. There was maybe a radio. But I only went there to sleep and shower I was at the shop when I didn't have to be at home to sleep or shower. So I would stay at the shop until it was too late. One night it was raining and I had the $300 car and I was driving back to the trailer. Uh, it was about a 30 mile, about a 30 minute drive on 280 over to the lake. And um, it was really foggy and I couldn't really see beyond my headlights. And I was going just a little bit too fast and I was kind of swerving trying to find the lines cause it was foggy and raining. <laughs> And a sheriff came up behind me and turned on the blue lights and pulled me over. I had a South Carolina tag. I had a South Carolina tag on the $300 car. Um, I might have had insurance on it. I did have registration. And he said, what are you doing out here this time of night? And I said, I'm on my way home. And he's looking at my license and he's looking at my registration. And he said, where's home, son? And I said, it's Lake Blackshear down here. I got a mobile home trailer. I stay in it at night. I work at Star Racing in America. He said, Star what? I said, Star Cycle. You know Star Racing. Oh, never heard of it. And I said, well, it's it's uh, it's downtown America. It's right from, across the street from Alan Wynn's Auto Parts. 
on Jefferson Street. And he said, yeah, yeah, never heard of it. So he gets on the radio. I got one out here on the, swerving around. He don't know where he's going. It's kind of late. And he says he's got a motorcycle shop in America. He said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to write you a ticket for speeding and wobbling or whatever it was. And he said, it's going to be about 80 bucks. And I said, well, I don't have 80 bucks, but at the shop, I have a cigar box, a cigar box. Prince Edward cigar box. It was my cash register. And I said, there's $80 in the, in the cigar box. And he says, okay, so you, what you want me to do? You want me to take you there? And I said, if you take me there, will you give me a ride back out to my car? And he's like, oh my gosh, I have a bit off more than I want to chew. So I got in the back of his car, closed up my car, pulled off the road, got in the back of the sheriff's car, and he took me to Star Racing. I went inside, opened up the cigar box. I had $80. I gave him $80. And he took me back out to my car and let me go home. So um, that was another good beginning of why I like to be at the shop instead of at home. I stayed as long as I could stand it. And I wore out my feet. I wore out my feet. My feet hurt for standing up from nine in the morning till midnight every night for all the years and all the months until I finally got some help. But I was the only employee at the shop at the time. Now, I'm bored you enough, let's go. Let's go to camshafts. And that's how we got here, but now we're gonna be talking about here, okay? Let's change. Let's change the scenery a little bit here. <laughs> Thank you for enduring that, that trip with me. Okay, you can see here Tech Talk Tuesday number 161. Um, I always put my little cross in 316. For, for God so loved the world that he sent his only son to die on the cross, pay for our sins, and those that believe in him shall never perish but have everlasting life. That's why I put that here. I uh, also wanted to make a note for you guys to realize that big engines need more time. What does it need more time? Well, they go really fast. Why does big engines need more time? Well, they, the engine is bigger, and when the intake valve opens and the piston goes down and the camshaft opens the valves, it takes longer for it to fill because the engine is bigger. Or you have to put really big valves, really big ports, really big throttle body, really big cam. But the reason, it's not the lift, and it's not the size of the throttle body, it's not the size of the valve, but it's the time, which is called duration. From how long we open the intake valve to the time we close it, we need more time. Also, I wanted to tell you that people send me notes, they send me messages, and they say, George, I want to advance my cam. They sell sprockets now that have advanced sprockets so I can advance my cam. So if you advance the cam and it's in the engine and it's rotating this way, you would advance it by putting it in this way. Further, if you wanted to retard the cam and the engine's going this way, you would put the cam in retarded. And if you want to advance it, you would put it in advance. But I got to share with you guys. This is the famous Star Racing 3030. This is kind of what started our custom camshaft business, but I got to tell you about it. This camshaft is already advanced. We are very fortunate that I have addressed advancing and retarding the lobes that need to be. Look at this cam, y'all. It's got four lobes on it. It has all the lobes. It has front cylinder, front cylinder, back cylinder, back cylinder. It has all the lobes. The twin cam has two cams with the lobes for back cylinder and front cylinder. This is the Milwaukee 8. It is a single cam, and it has all the lobes, all the exhaust lobes, intake lobes on the same cam. Now, if you advance this cam, like people call me and they say, I want to advance this cam. If you advance the cam because you want to close the intake valve sooner or you want to open the intake valve sooner or you want to close the exhaust valve sooner or you want to open the exhaust valve sooner you get all that from advancing the cam but that's not what you want you want the cam to be timed correctly so if you're going to advance the cam you need to change the timing location of each one of these lobes because if you only want to advance the intake what are you going to do with the exhaust if you're going to advance the intake four degrees, then you need to retard the exhaust four degrees so you have them back where they were. When you have one cam with all the lobes on it, i.e. pro stock car, V8, six cylinder, whatever, you get the pro stock car, the 500 inch, it's got all the lobes. 
it has one stick with all the lobes on it. So, and then on Jessel belt drive, they have the, the slotted uh, slot bolt slots on the timing gear where you can loosen up four bolts and you can rotate the crankshaft with the cam not moving. You can back the cam up four degrees, lock the bolts down, and now you have advanced the camshaft in reference to the crankshaft. Problem is, is you advanced every stinking lobe on that whole cam. You did not advance only what you wanted to advance. You even advanced the lobes you didn't want to advance. So just by moving the whole stick advanced or back forward or backwards is not what you want to do. If it is, you need a different camshaft. So this cam, the 3030, the reason it's so successful is because the intake valve opens at the right time, the exhaust valve opens at the right time, the intake valve closes at the right time, which is the most important number, and the uh, exhaust and the intake valve open. Let's see, intake valve opens at the right time and the exhaust valve closes at the right time. That's overlap. Those are the two least significant numbers. When the intake valve closes is number one and when the exhaust valve opens is number two. Those matter the most. So don't just go buy an advance gear set so you can advance your cam. You're going to mess up the power band of your engine. Why does I, why did I put down big engines need more time? Well, there's lots of camshafts. Just star racing alone for the Milwaukee 8, we have the 3030, we have the F35A, we have the three quarter, and we have the full race. And I want to tell you a little bit about the difference. The 3030 cam is this one. It is made to fit in a stock engine with stock heads, stock valves, stock springs, push rods, lifters, everything. You can bolt this cam in. And if you put a nice header on it, a two into one, or something really, really nice that's tuned, like a D&D &D makes a tuned one, um, Thunderheader, uh, Bassani, um, I hear that um, Fuel Moto has a nice new two into one uh, that's got long, you need a long one. The, the two into one short dump stumpies, um, those sound like dump trucks to me, that's my opinion. You love them, I don't. Um, they uh, make power horribly. Uh, they're, they're just for looks. They're definitely not for sound and they're not for power. If you're invested in one of those or you like it, then me and you are on two different pages and I love you anyway. Okay. I, it's okay. But if it was me, I wouldn't use one because I would, if I do any work to my Milwaukee 8, I want it to perform better. I want it to be more fun. I want it to have more performance. So if I wanted more power than the 3030, I would go to the F35A and this is made for small engines too. But if you put springs in it and I have the cam lobes affixed and aligned and timed to where you can put the F35A into a stock engine. 107 is awesome, 114, 117, and they make a little bit more power than the 3030. But the 3030, this is a dyno sheet from the from the F35A, you can see that they cross the same horsepower and torque at 5,200, just like all engines do. But where the 3030 falls over just a little bit right here, just it falls over just a little bit, this one keeps carrying on. This engine made uh, uh, 130 foot-pounds on a stock 114 with our springs in it and 126 foot-pounds. And you say, well, you know, I've heard of way more foot-pounds of torque than that on on stock engines when they got the right parts, yeah. But this is a trade-off. We moved this whole curve, we moved it about 500 RPM to the right. The 3030, you see this started at 2500, 2600. The 3030, you can start it over here at 2000 and it builds torque really soon and it comes up and then it falls over at about 5000, it starts tapering off. But the 3030 camshaft is made for 500 more RPM to the left. It'll be from here to here. If you wanted more than that to outrun your buddies through the gears or at the racetrack, if you put the F35A in, you will make more power to the right, another 500 RPM this way. Just like this says right here, it made peak power at 6,100. Well, the 3030 camshaft in the same engine made peak power at about 56, 5,400. So it just moved the curve that way and it fattened up the bottom. And I wrote this note to help me remember. What is your goal? Do you want to make more power from 5,000 RPM and lower? Or do you want to make more power from 5,000 RPM and up? You guys that race, race cars, racing motorcycles, um, 
anything that you race, you want it to go faster and you're looking for RPM. If I'm racing, I'm looking for RPM. Did you know that the guys that race diesel trucks, Duramaxes and all those, those guys are doing everything they can to get RPM right now because they already have 3,000 foot pounds and 2,000 foot pounds and, but they can't rev them up. They make power over here. The diesel trucks make the power here, from here to here. And the ones that win, when they drag race or on dyno shootouts or any of that competition, they're trying to elevate their RPM even on the diesel so they run over here, which means their horsepower curve is going to go higher and their torque curve is going to go lower because that's what wins in a competition. But if you, and I know we argue about this all the time, do you want torque or horsepower? Well, horsepower is nothing but torque with RPM mixed in. Your all engines have torque. It's just where do they have it? Do they have peak torque over here? Do they have peak torque over here? The Steve Johnson's Pro Stock motorcycle, it has peak torque way over here, way over here. Of course, it has peak horsepower way over here. And then the uh, the guys that want 5,000 lower, that's you. That's the guys that ride around on the highway. Um, that matters. How much power do you have at 2,000, 3,000, 4,000? How much power do you have right there? So when you crack the throttle, it rips. You don't even care what it makes after 5,000. I have those camshafts too, the, the th three-quarter cam. I call it a three-quarter race cam because that's uh, it's three-quarter highway use, one-quarter race. Then I have the full race, which is nothing but race. And the full race camshaft, it focuses all its efforts over here. Three-quarter cams in the middle. The F-35A is a little bit more to the left, and the 3030 is more to the left even more. So I just wanted to make that you guys understand that. So if you ride on the highway in a car, let's say you got a Chevelle, a Mustang, a Nova, pickup truck, I don't care what you got. You're only interested in 5,000 RPM and down because you do rev it over five. All of us do, even the Corvette guys, Mustang guys, Camaros, they're all revving over 5,000, but they only do it 1% of the time. And that's when they're getting after it, trying to outrun somebody or just want to impress themselves with how the engine sounds at 6,000, 7,000 RPM. But what you feel driving around, going to work, going to the track and riding around with your buddies, you feel this. This is what you feel. 5,000 RPM and down. That's why we need torque here. If you're wanting to go faster and you want to outrun people, you need to have power 5,000 and up. And when I raced this bike against the identical motorcycle with the 3030 cam, he, if we go from a dead, if we're just rolling and floor it, the 3030 cam will pull out first. But as soon as it's time to shift, I'm gonna put two bikes on him, shift. Then it's time to shift, I'm gonna put two bikes on him and shift. So I will outrun the 3030 114 through the gears, shifting at high 6,000 RPM, I'm gonna outrun him up top, but he's gonna drive away from me down low on the highway. I just wanted to clear that up. And then back to the big engines need more time. If you have a 131, 128, 132, 133, man, I've seen some numbers out there. 139, 143, 150, all these cubic inch engines, you need more time. So that means you're gonna need a fat cam. Not necessarily more lift, but it's definitely going to need some more time. And valve needs to be open longer so that you have more time for the airflow to come through the intake and fill that big cylinder. Some of them are 4.4 bore, some of them are 4.3 bore, some of them are 4.6 bore. And you're going to need some time to fill that. If it's little, like a small engine, like a 107, 114, 117, it doesn't need that much time. It just needs to open at the right time and it needs to close at the right time. That's what I had to say about that. The big go is coming up this weekend. Um, Indy, I think it's going to be the 67th U.S. Nationals. That's important for me because I was born the first day of the first U.S. Nationals. Um, so every year when they sell a ticket, it says 67th annual. Last year it said 60, nope, 66th annual, 68th annual. I don't remember. But anyway, I'm, I'm going to be 68 at Indy. So I think it'll be the 68th annual. I really do. I could be wrong, but I know every year it reminds me of my birthday. But they're going to have over 20-something uh, Pro Stock motorcycles gone. There's 95, 96, 97 professional Camping World teams. 
the top fuel, the funny car, the pro stock car, and the pro stock motorcycle. There'll be 95 or 96 professional teams represented. That'll be the biggest field in history. 950 cars are entered. They're going to race Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Pro stock motorcycles and pro stock cars get their first run Friday evening. Uh, after work on Friday, uh, Saturday, you get two qualifying sessions. Sunday, they get two qualifying sessions, weather permitting. And then on Monday, they have the race, Labor Day. On Labor Day, that's the birthday for me and the U.S. Nationals. So it's easy to remember how old I am. I think it's on the ticket. Um, a lot of my friends are going. Uh, I usually go every year, but I'm not going this year because I'm very busy. And I get to work on this stuff now. Plus, I have some cool projects of my own that I'm working on right now. And I saw somebody ask me about big valves. Um, yes, big valves do the same thing. They give you more time and area. So it's area and time. So if you have if you have a 143 or 131 or whatever, and you want bigger valves, uh, that will replace a big camshaft. So the bigger the valves are and the bigger the ports are and the bigger the throttle body is, the less time you need building the camshaft. That's just a thought. So it's not necessarily unless you're going to race pro stock to have the biggest ports, biggest valves, biggest pipes, biggest exhaust valves, and the biggest camshaft. That's what you do when you want all the power to be 10,000, 6,000, 8,000, 9,000, when you want it way above 5,000. That's when you want the biggest of everything because your RPM is going to have to be bigger too. I am see she's going to run a lot of uh, questions out here. I see a lot of folks. Oh, and a lot of subjects I see a, a real popular one popping up again and people ask me a lot of stuff and as you remind me I will um talk about that on the on this um on the docket for us to talk about another time soon is the crankcase ventilation issues it's not just Harleys but let me say this out loud while everybody's watching this into engines back when I was in high school and growing up and hot riding cars there was no crankcase ventilation issues. Yes, we were puking oil out of the breathers. We had four breathers. We had two breathers on the 327, 350s, 396s. We had valve covers that had the AC breathers on there, and you had to put, you had to tie a shop rag around it with a knot to keep the oil from running down on your headers and smoking. You pull up at a traffic light, and you, <laughs> you see smoke coming out of the hood, and you're like, oh, your engine's blown up. No, it's just puking oil on the headers, and it's burning the oil off, so it's it's not nor it's <laughs> before the EPA got involved. Listen, you guys, we used to have a vent hose come out of the crankcase and out of the manifold that would go down to the ground. In a '63 Chevy, there was a vent hose went to the ground. And if you if you were my age and you were riding your motorcycle to school, every traffic light, every stop sign you pulled up to, that was a giant oil slick right where you stop, where everybody would come to a stop. It would shake all the oil off of their valve covers, off their breathers, and there would be an oil slick. And the trucks, oh my gosh, the big Kenworths and all those big freight liners pulling up to this traffic light, they would dump all their crankcase ventilation on the ground. And if you come rolling up there on a hot day or a rainy day and in the middle of the lane, not on the left tire of the car, not on the right tire of the car, but right in the middle and you hit the brakes, you were going down, brother, bam, because it was an oil slick. I notice now since most all the cars, 20 years and newer, and motorcycles have internal crankcase ventilation that regurgitates and reventilates all that crappy oily mist back through the engine. It goes back through the um, manifold, back through the carburetor, back through the throttle body, and we have to burn it again. And hopefully the second time it doesn't burn as much. But what happens is it reduces the octane and it carbons up the intake valves and the pistons and it also elevates the compression ratio. You can take a brand new Milwaukee 8, burns a little oil. It has um, crankcase breathers coming through the heads into the throttle body so that when it pukes that oily mist, it goes right back through the engine and it builds up carbon. And you can take a 10 and a half to 1 Milwaukee 8 and run it for about 10,000 miles and it'll have 11 to 1 compression from the carbon buildup on it. And it spark knocks and pings. And then when you're running 91 octane and you've got um, oily smoky mist coming back through the breathers going in as soon as that gasoline and oil touches the octane goes right down spark knot goes right up the pinging starts the rings bouncing and shaking lets crankcase pressure get worse and it's an evolutionary snow ball of puking and burning oil and it's never ending and listen it's not harley's fault it's not chevrolet's fault 
It's none of them people's fault that they put that crap back in there. The only reason they do it is because the Environmental Protection Agency dictates that we have to re-inhale the oily mist and the crankcase ventilation. So my own motorcycle, my own cars, I never do. As soon as I bought my new Milwaukee 8, I took the breathers right out of the throttle body and ran them to the ground. I'm st and I don't still don't puke anything out because my engine sealed up nice. I broke it in right. I put big pressure on the rings and broke it in nice so it's not puking oil in the breathers and I don't spit oil out of the crankcase like some people do. Time's up. I love y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in. Tech Talk 161 is in the books. Um, I have my Beagle socks on. This looks like the Beatles, but they're Beagles. Check it out. <laughs> uh, people ask me about my socks. Anyway, thank you all for tuning in. I hope this made some sense to you. Thank you guys for championing this camshaft. It's created a great uh, opportunity for Jackie and I to share the things we learned all the years with you guys. And um, come back again next Tuesday where we can talk about these other great ideas you guys are scrolling across my screen while I'm talking. May God bless you all. Have a great week. I'll see you Labor Day the next day. Good night.